Divine Truth Assistance Group. These group assistance sessions are about putting principles of divine truth into action. This discussion is part of the 2014 Australia Group 1 series. Jesus and Mary present group truth on the subject of relationships, filmed on the 17th of July 2014 in Monterey, New South Wales, Australia. Okay, there's just one more thing I'd like to say before Mary uh, comes up to start her session, and it's about relationships. Ladies, all clear? Okay. Just one comment I'd like to make about relationships. What I see happening in a lot of relationships is you treat each other as enemies. You do not treat each other as friends and you do not have compassion for each other's emotional injuries. Right? So, so when in a real good relationship, if you're trying to develop working towards God in a relationship, you will each have compassion for the other person's emotional injuries and you'll he help each other highlight the emotional injury, not the addiction or the rage or the other problems, which are all to do with the surface. The injury, remember, is the hurt child. You'll be focusing each other's attention on the hurt child. For most of you, you have not even seen the hurt child of your partner, let alone have any compassion for them. You treat each other's hurt child with the same disdain that you treat your own hurt child. You deny it, punish it, tell it off, and that just causes more problems in the relationship. The way to deal with these problems in a relationship is to have love for each other's hurt child. Right? That means you don't let them get away with everything. You still say the truth and all those kind of things, but you allow each other to feel the hurt child rather than having a desire to punish each other for your treatment of each other. So at one point in the future, what we might do is talk about what that looks like if you really loved each other's hurt child or hurt self, what you would actually do in situations. And you could see in the situation with, with Alwyn and, and uh, Neil that if, if Alwyn had seen Neil's hurt child or hurt self, she would have gone, wow, you're just feeling like I didn't love you. That's what you're feeling. She would have been able to easily see that, right? And Neil would have been able to go, wow, you're just, you're, every time I say that I feel hurt, you feel afraid. Right? And that's why you get so angry. So, so instead, of, instead of feeling the anger, like choose to go into the fear. Every time somebody tells you that they hurt, you think it's your fault. You blame yourself. You, you think it's something you've got to do to fix it. You know, When you focus each other on the hurt child, you'll find you are far more compassionate with each other and you also, as a result of the compassion, help each other feel the emotions of the hurt child, which are the emotions that eventually relate a lot to forgiveness. So you'll actually assist each other quite a lot to develop. Does that make sense? Yeah. Jan? Just let, uh, sorry, Joy, sorry to do that to you. Um, can that work if only one person in the relationship is aware of all this stuff? Yes. Um, yeah. When myself and Mary first met, only I was aware of what was going on in the relationship to a large degree, and I always focused on her on her hurt child. I had compassion for her hurt child. So even when she was yelling and screaming at me, I still had compassion for her hurt child. Not that she yelled and screamed at me very frequently, but she would often get resistive and angry. And there were occasions where she did yell and scream, and, and I always focused her on her hurt child. In other words, I didn't yell and scream back, right? I didn't, yeah. I didn't dump on her back, yeah. Yeah. right? I focused, I focused my attention on saying, darling, 
You're angry, I get all that, but this is all about this hurt. Yeah. You know? That's, yep. that's mm. what it's about. And is it also useful to try and get them to understand and see that I have hurts too? No, that's very selfish. Very selfish. See, a person right. who loves doesn't do that at all. Okay. Do, does everyone get what, what was just said? The question was, do I also help them see my hurt? No, that's a very selfish act. Right. Personally, like, so I wasn't focused on Mary and going, can't you see all this hurt that I've got and what you're doing to me and how it hurts me and all that kind of stuff? No, I never did that. Okay, right. thank you. Doing that's just a selfish act. You want, and it's all addictive, you want them to give you a whole heap of things. And so what you're basically saying is, what, what you were suggesting when you suggest that is you're basically saying, because I'm nice and compassionate to her hurt child, she should be nice and compassionate, damn it, to mine. <laughs> Does that make sense? And what's that? That's the demand, that's the rage, that's the anger linked to the addiction not getting met. You see, if I have no addictions with regard to love, I can love the other person without telling the other person all of the feelings that I'm having, if they don't want to hear them, without telling them all the feelings I'm having. This is why many of you who have partners who are not following the path struggle, because you're always trying to dump on them your hurt. You want them to do for you what you're th you think you're trying to do for them. A lot of times you're not even doing it for them, though, if you're honest. You're only doing it for them because you want them to do it for you. And that, all that's selfish. Uh, it's not love. A love. Love is selfless in that regard. And what that means is love is able to go, okay, if this is just about your hurt child, darling, and then she's still angry, well, this is still just about your hurt child. And love doesn't go, now you're hurting me. Love doesn't do that. Now you're hurting me. Now I'm going to get, now, what, 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 now you've got to stop doing that, you know, or whatever. Love doesn't do that. Right? Love just focuses on giving love to the other person. That's what it does. It doesn't mean that it doesn't say the truth. So you can say, oh, well, that behavior I feel is abusive. You say, oh, you know, you're getting angry now and there's no reason for you to get angry with me because I'm, I'm not the enemy. Right? But you'll only need to say all those things if you feel them. Yep. Teresa? Could I add something there about Sorry, the really? hurt child? Just very, quick. Just very quickly about the hurt child. Mm -hmm. It's going to be difficult for you to care for your partner's hurt child unless you're connected to your own hurt child. Impossible, and, in fact. Yes. Impossible. And when you make that connection, you're going to want to care for your own hurt child, not make someone else responsible for doing it. A lot of our addictions are in place because we want someone else to care for our hurt child before we do it, and yep. that's not caring for anyone's hurt child. Yep. Does that make sense? So, so, so if, if I'm in a state of love with Mary, right, and I love and care about her, and I've dealt with my hurt child in the sense that I honour it, I listen to the feelings, I allow myself to feel those feelings, I allow myself to forgive and so forth, when Mary doesn't honour my hurt child, it won't affect me very much, will it? Because I'm already doing it for me. I won't need her to do it for me. Right? Does that make sense to everyone? That's what love would do, isn't it, yeah. Teresa? Um, what about if your partner um, is, you know they're angry, but they're not directing it at you? And I think that's because he's just too afraid to rage at me. Yeah, why would he be afraid to rage at you? Because I'm angry. Because, <laughs> yeah. So what would I do first? Deal with my anger. Yeah, yeah. I'd look at, like, if my partner's so afraid of me, that even though he's angry, he still can't express it. It means that he's pretty afraid. Yeah. And I'd, go, I'd be going, wow, that, that, that means he's really afraid of me. Mm. <laughs> what, what inside of me causes him to be that afraid? Yeah. Right? You can't expect him to actually voice his feelings and opinions while he's that afraid. 
and while you're perpetrating actions that may cause him to be that afraid. Does that make sense? Yeah, so go back to the rage. Yep. Yeah. So let, what was the question, though? Um, well, yeah, if, he, if, he's not ang if he's directing anger elsewhere, yep. um, how do you address that? Well, do you agree yeah. with his anger? No. I can't agree because you agree yeah. with your own. So I think it's okay for him to be angry. Well, you think it's okay for you to be angry. So that justifies... How, how can mean? you ask another person to not be angry when you know you are? Can you see the hypocrisy of that? Yeah. So how can you ask or demand of the other person something that you personally don't do? Yeah. That's not very kind. Mm. Like at least do your side of it first and once you've done that, you can go, well, I was angry like you are now, but this is what I felt and this is what I had to do and then now I'm over that. But, but while you're angry, how can you expect your partner to not be? Do you get angry with other people? Yes. Yeah. So, so how can you stop him from getting angry with other people while you get angry with other people? There's an internal justification inside of you that says I'm allowed to get angry with other people when I want to. So that means there must be an internal justification in him that he says to himself, I'm allowed to get angry with other people if I want to. Now, how can you advise him about something you've never done? No, I can't. Yeah. No, but you want to. Yeah, because I'm frightened of his rage. Of course. But don't you think he's frightened of yours? You just said he was. Yeah. Yeah, it just, feel, yeah, it just feels like a vicious circle. No, it's not a vicious circle. You're focusing on him rather than focusing on yourself. That's the problem. You think that he should change his anger first before you do. That's the problem. So it's not a vicious circle. It's you not coming face to face with the fact that you need to do some changes and forget about him for a moment and you focus on your changes. That's not a vicious circle. That's you not looking at your personal responsibility. Does that make sense? Yeah. And you need to see it as such. How, you can't demand of somebody else that they do something you haven't done. Mm. That, that, that's just an act of hypocrisy. That, that's what causes breakups in marriage. When you expect your partner to do something that you haven't done, they're just going to say, what, are you an idiot? You're a hypocrite. And many of the people who have found divine truth are hypocrites because they expect everybody else to do something they personally haven't done yet. A person who's progressing towards God doesn't do that. They do it first and then they help the people around them do it by being honest and truthful and loving with those people. That's what they do. Okay. Most of us don't do that because you know why? We, we have no intention of doing it first. Remember the discussion I had with, who was it? Kate. Kate and... Um, the first two, Deirdre and Carmel? No, No, it was... Uh, Nina and Joy. <coughs> Christiana. Alan and Neil. <laughs> Who, Who did I do today? Kate. Sorry, I've already Kate, you talked to Kate, Kate about right. um, expecting her mum to change before she was going to change. Yeah, but I, I'm not talking about the feeling of anger and rage here in the fact that most people, most, most of us think, I know the truth now, everybody should do it except for me. That's how we act. I know the truth now. Yeah. You know, you know, how many times have you imposed on a friend, a family member... A, a, a partner, a child, they should do the truth now that you know it. Yeah. Yeah. Right? But you don't do it. <laughs> like, so how can you expect them to do it? I don't understand the reasoning. You do it first. You show them what to do through your actions, through your behaviour, through your example, through what you've actually worked through emotionally and everything. And then you might be able to say to them that, but I tell you what, you won't feel like saying that to them. But see, most of you want to say that to them because you want to wait until everybody else changes before you do. And in the relationship, this is a major problem. 
most of us want the other party to change before we do. Right? And we've got to stop that. We've got to stop it. We need to change first. We're the only person that can control our own change anyway. We need to change first. When we change, we become an example for the other party as to what love would do in every case. And then, of course, that's going to have an impact on them and you don't even have to open your mouth half the time and that will have an impact on them. But there are times when you open your mouth and you tell the truth and say the truth, but you won't be full of rage while you do it and full of like bitterness and anger about the past and all those because you've forgiven all those things. And you'll actually be logical. You'll actually make some sense when you say something then. Because at the moment we don't make much sense at all because what do we do? We drag. You know, if you think about what, what Alvin and Neil were talking about in their example, right? there was a dragging of Neil's own feelings of being unloved into the situation. Does that make sense? Totally illogical, but it happened. And then the argument comes all about that. Right? This is what we do when we're not healed. So you don't even know that your arguments that you're presenting to your partner are actually true anyway. That's, that's part of the problem. Work out whether they're true or not first before you start arguing about it. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, really important to do these things in a relationship. Yeah. Any other? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Marion. All right. I'm just wondering, like, when you'd get to the stage of, um, like, separating for some, with someone for a period of time, if they're the only ones that trigger that emotion for you to kind of get into, except you don't want to get into it. And so you, you, you separate and then you distract yourself with stuff. I guess that's the lack of will to really get into the truth. Yeah, and it's also and doing what off. I talked about with Kate, and that is... And that is, you know, do you go back to the situation? No, because that would be unloving. What would be the most loving thing is to actually deal with the situation and then perhaps re-enter the relationship if you still feel a strong pull or a love towards the person, then re-enter the relationship, right? That's what you would do. Yeah. But most of us don't. We leave and we go and find another, another person to trial out all of our errors on. Yeah, I was distracting myself as to the type like the of place I'd yeah, 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 the type of place I'd get and all yeah. that kind of stuff, which is a total we go distraction. And another person who mm. eventually we're going to have to repent towards for attracting them. Yeah. Any other questions before Mary moves on with you? No, let's go. Alrighty.